Okay, in this video, we're going to cover 15.1, which is vector fields. However, in this chapter, in the entire chapter, there are not very many problems per section. So there's usually about 10 or less problems per section. So I think this section had um, seven problems. Some of them have multiple parts, um, but I couldn't answer all of them. So I, I tried to do as many of them as I could, but some of them, if you notice, don't have anything in red and therefore if I do that particular problem I'm essentially doing the problem for you okay so um, I did the one problem that had the red stuff in it so that it's randomly generated you'll get different numbers so your answers will come out a little bit different but the process should still be very similar and the same for number two the process will be similar it's just that um I don't want to do this as an example because then I basically do the problem for you. But I can do number three, I can do number four, I can do number five. Number six does not have anything in red, so I went right over that one. Um, and then um, number seven we did here. Or actually, number seven I did not do. I didn't even see number seven. So I will actually do number seven in this recording because I didn't pre um, do that one. I must not have scrolled down farther far enough to see that problem. Interesting. Anyway, um, so let's go ahead and uh, get started. Actually, I don't want to record that. So let it have a minute. And then I'm gonna X out of this because I'm not trying to record using this thing. Okay. So, okay, let me grab my focus so it doesn't keep going back and forth. Okay, here we go. So for number one, the problem was determining whether the vector field is conservative. So in order to figure out whether it's conservative, I do like to put my vectors in their component form. So um, I basically distributed the 7y cubed to both of these terms and then put the i component, the i coefficient, the i components coefficient in the first position and the j components coefficient in the second position. Okay. Um, they call this component m and they call the second component n. Okay. And in order for us to be conservative, the derivative of m with respect to y must equal the derivative of n with respect to x. So I went ahead and took the derivative of m with respect to y and I ended up with 28y cubed. Then I took the derivative of n with respect to x and I ended up also with 28y cubed. Since they are the same, then this um, vector field f is considered conservative. Now, number two is asking us the same thing. So you will have to take this and distribute it to each term. And I prefer to have it in component form, but if you like it in the IJK form, that's totally okay too. Um, but my hint to you is to rewrite the radical expression using rational exponent, okay? So instead of a radical, use the exponent of one half, okay? And then it would be one plus x, y, all in parentheses raised to the one half. Okay, so essentially this would become this. And if you want to avoid, um, if you want to avoid um, using the quotient rule when you have to do your division, you, because it's underneath. You could write it whatever the numerator is, right? You could write the numerator times one plus x y to the negative one half. And then that way you're only using the product rule instead of the quotient rule. But that's just a hint. You can do the derivative however you want to do it. Um, just make sure you remember the chain rule, regular chain rule, and the chain rule when finding partial derivatives. Okay. Um, so just be very, very careful with that one. Now, Let's see here, we have another vector field and it says determine whether this one is conservative. So again, I wrote them in their component form so I can help me single out M and N. And so I took the derivative of M with respect to Y. So nine over X is like the coefficient. 
And then I took the derivative of n with respect to x. So I'll still have, this will become 18, just x to the one power, and the y squared will still be downstairs. Um, and these two are not equivalent, so it is not conservative, which means down here, I should have typed in d and e, okay? Because since it's not conservative, I won't be able to find a potential function. Now, number four is a different vector field. So now we've got this vector field. And again, I took this whole thing and I distributed and then wrote the I component here and the J component there without the I vector and the J vector, right? This one's called M, this one's called N. So I took the derivative of M with respect to Y. Now understand here that there's gonna be a product rule going on, okay? So I basically have this times this. So when I did it, I did the first um, factor times the derivative of the second factor. And the derivative of e to the anything is e to the same power and then take the derivative of the power. That's the chain rule, okay? So the derivative of this with respect to um, y would be all of this is a coefficient. So we actually end up with three x squared plus then the second factor times the derivative of the first factor with respect to y. So this acts like a coefficient. So the derivative of that is just going to be 2x. And then I went ahead and multiplied these together and I got 6x cubed y and then e to the x squared 3y. And then here I multiplied these two together and I just got 2x e to the x squared 3y. Um, you could put the 3 in the front, 3x squared y. I just didn't. Um, now, for the derivative of this term, excuse me, with respect to x, we're going to do another product rule, but this is the first term and this is the second term. So it's the first times the derivative of the second and then the derivative of the exponent with respect to x. So this becomes 2x and this is a constant multiplier times the e to, two, the, e to the x squared 3y times the derivative of the function that was in the front. And the derivative of x squared is 2x. So it's the first times the derivative of the second plus the second times the derivative of the first. Um, and then these I also multiplied together and got this. And this I multiplied together just putting the 2x in the front. And if you notice, they are equivalent. Both of these terms are exactly the same. And so this vector field is conservative. So if you want to find out what the potential function is, um, it's basically trying to figure out what did you take the derivative of to get this, okay? Um, where you would end up with, um, your like basically this is the gradient. It's the derivative of each one, okay? Um, now, when we take the integral of that first term and then we do the integral of the second term. So that's the goal here is to take the integral of each of these terms. Now, when you integrate the first one, you're gonna integrate it with respect to the opposite variable. So instead of doing my, we're gonna do the integral with respect to x. And instead of doing the derivative with respect to x here, we're gonna take that integral with respect to y. So it's like the variables swap, okay? Makes sense because the first term in a gradient is the derivative with respect to x, and then the second term in the gradient is the derivative with respect to y, right? So we're doing the integrals of those to find out what it should have been. And so if I do this with respect to x, um, I'm actually going to let u equal my exponent, and then du, the derivative of this stuff with respect to x, would be 2x times my constant multiplier times dx. Now I do have the 2xy, I just don't have this three. So I divided both sides by three. And then what that gave me is, and there's some steps in here missing, but I'll, I'll write them temporarily and then I'll just erase my little sticky. So essentially what I did was I substitute everything in there. Um, this part um, became dx, du over three. And then e to this became e to the u, okay? And so when I integrate that, I get one third e to the u 
plus C, right? Normally it's like some constant or whatever, but U is um, X squared three Y. So what we ended up with was one third E to the X squared plus three Y. And instead of plus C, because now we have uh, partial derivatives and partial integrals now, okay? So you can't put plus C because any constants or any terms that have just Y in them would all turn to zero when I take the derivative of it. And that was the whole point of the plus C when we were doing regular integration was that no matter what your function is, when you take a derivative of a, of a constant, it's gonna end up zero. So when you do the integration of something, you have to factor in the fact that there could be some constant that you don't know about because when you took the derivative, it, the, that constant ended up going away. And so you don't see it in the part that you're integrating, okay? Um, but for us, since we have functions that are in terms of both x's and y's, when I'm integrating with respect to x, it's not just gonna be a constant. It could be anything else that has any kind of other expression that has just y. And we're gonna denote that by g of y. So this g of y could be anything that just has y, okay? And normally what you're gonna do is you're gonna go do this other one and you're gonna see if it has any extra terms that just have y. If it does, then you know what this g of y is, okay? Now, similarly, we're gonna do the same kind of thing for the other term. So we're gonna integrate that one, but with respect to y. So in this case, um, In this case, we're going to literally do the same thing. U is going to be x squared 3y. Then du is going to be 2x times 3y. You do have, um, oh, I'm doing it with respect to y though. So the derivative of this with respect to y is actually 3x squared because those are constant multipliers, dy. And so then I have the x squared. What I don't have is the three. So if you want to put the three in, you have to put the one third out. It's the same thing as me just using dy over three, okay? I know it's a little inconsistent with the way I did it, but it's equivalent to the same thing. So what I could have done is I could have said, this is, and I'll show you that it comes out the same. So after talking about all my u substitution, this is gonna be e to the u, because that's what u is. And then x squared dy is gonna get replaced with du over three. So this becomes one third, the integral of e to the u is e to the u, again, plus your c. And that's exactly what I ended up with here is one third e to the x squared three y, because that's what u is. Um, and instead of plus c, it's it's the same conversation as before. If you're integrating with respect to y, then any functions that just had x's in them would um, become zero, okay? And so we, uh, we know that this constant, what used to be a constant, now with partial derivatives and partial integration, um, means that it could be any function of x. So, I looked at this function, or excuse me, I looked at what I got here and I looked at what I got here and they did have something in common. So it's this, but I didn't have any function of just y over here and I didn't have any function in just x over here. So I couldn't tell you what this is. And to me, that means it, or it looks like there's nothing there, it doesn't exist, okay? You're not gonna have any extra pieces of function with respect to X or Y, okay? So all you could possibly have is just a constant. And it looks like they used plus K instead of plus C for that constant, okay? So I literally just entered this in there and the plus K was just sitting off to the side. Now for number five, number five asks us to determine the curl. So number five, I have my vector field here. I did put it in its component form just because I don't prefer the IJK component form. Um, and I have this point here. So in order for me to find the curl, it's basically a bunch of operators, the derivative with respect to X, the partial with respect to Y, and then the partial derivative with respect to Z, right? 
And then each term goes in here. And then we start to do our determinant formula. So we have I, that's that one. So I'm gonna take out that row and that um, column. And then we're actually gonna do ddy of yz minus ddz of this term, negative two xz. Then for the next term, it's gonna have a minus and we're gonna do j. So again, top row out and middle column out. So we're doing the derivative with respect to x of this term, it's symbolized here, minus the derivative with respect to z of this term, which is written right here. And all of that, of course, is the j component. Then finally, we're gonna work on this minor uh, major. So that's gonna be the k component. And then we wipe out the row and the column. And then we have the derivative with respect to x of this minus the derivative with respect to y of that. And we have that here. And so then it's just a matter of computing it. So the derivative with respect to y of this is just z. This negative and this negative turn to a plus. And the derivative of 2xz with respect to z is just 2x. Here, this you've got a negative and you've got the derivative with respect to x, which is just zero. So I didn't want to put negative zero, I just put zero. And then here you have a negative and a negative, which makes it positive. And the derivative of this with respect to z is just x squared. Then here, the derivative of this with respect to x is negative 2z and then minus, and the derivative with respect to y, there's no y's in here, so the derivative would just be zero. And so then I ended up with z plus two x for the first component, x squared for the second component, and negative two z for the third component. Now I still have to evaluate this vector at this point, okay? And so to do that, we're just plugging in three for x, negative nine for y, and one for z. I don't seem to have any y, so I didn't really plug in that negative nine anywhere. But once you do all your, comp your computations for each component, you do end up with the vector here, seven, nine, negative two, and it did turn out to be correct. Now, number seven, I can do because it does algorithmically generate it. I just didn't do it, okay? So I hope I have enough paper. If not, I'll try to write on another sheet. Okay. So for this one, they want, they give me F and I'm just gonna write this informally in its component form. And then G in its component form, X negative Y, Z. And then it asked me to do two computations and basically verify that they're, they equi they're equivalent, okay? So the curl, of f cross g requires me to find the cross product first. So I am going to um, try to figure that out. And then the gradient cross um, f cross g. So let's see. Well, it, both of them require me to know what f cross g is. So let's go find what f cross g is. So we have I, J, K, then we have one, five X, four Y, X, negative Y, Z. So we take out the I component, we get um, five X, Z minus a negative four Y squared. Then take out the J component. So we end up with Z minus four X, Y. And then finally the K component, negative Y minus five X squared J. Okay. So if I put it in component form, it's actually going to be five X Z um, plus four Y squared. This distributes and I end up with negative Z plus four X Y and then negative Y minus five X squared in component form, okay? And so then in order for me to verify this, this side equals that side, let's do the curl first. So curl of F cross G. That means I have I, J, K, the derivative with respect to X, the derivative with respect to Y, the derivative with respect to Z. 
And then I have these terms. Okay, I tried to fit that in there as best as I could. It's just this term, this term, and this term. So let's go ahead and figure this out. We're gonna have cover that and that. So the derivative of that is the derivative of this with respect to y. Oops, minus this one. So the derivative with respect to z of negative z plus 4xy, all of that is the i component plus, now cover the j component. There we go. d dx of negative y minus 5x squared minus d dz. Actually, I need to go all the way over to the front. d dz of 5xz plus 4y squared. All of that is the j component. Plus, now we're going to do d dx of negative z plus 4xy minus derivative with respect to y, 5xz plus 4y squared, and then the j component. Again, I couldn't squeeze it all in there. So I'm going to do the derivatives and put it in component form. So the derivative for the i's. The derivative of this term with respect to y is going to be negative 1 and then 0. So just negative 1. Then here, we're going to have um, the derivative of negative z with respect to z is negative 1. But with this negative, it's going to turn it into plus 1. And the derivative of this term with respect to z is just 0. So that's all of the i component, which will eventually just be 0. Then now moving on to the um, j component. So it's actually supposed to be minus here in the j component. So we have derivative with respect to x of the first term is 0. So a negative 0 is still 0. And then the derivative with respect to this term is negative 10x. But with this negative, it's going to actually be positive 10x. Um, and then we have minus this. So you have a negative and a negative. So this is actually just going to be as is. So the derivative of this term with respect to um, x is actually positive 5, or with respect to z is positive 5x. And the derivative of this term with respect to z is 0. So that's all I get for the second term. Now for the third term, we have the derivative of z with respect to x is 0. The derivative of 4xy with respect to x is 4y. And then the derivative with respect to y of 5xz is 0. The derivative with respect to y of 4y squared is 8y, but a negative times a positive is a negative. So if we clean that up, we actually end up with 0, 15x, and negative 4y. And so the question is, is, is this answer equivalent to the gradient cross product with this? OK, so let's see. The gradient cross product with that is um, is basically going to look like this. I'm going to need to do another paper. But if you do the gradient of f cross g, that's going to be the partial with respect to x, the partial with respect to, um, oh, it's i, j, k. Sorry, my bad. i, j, k. And then the gradient is uh, d, dx, d, dy, d, dz. Or actually, no, I totally forgot what the gradient is. You can figure out the gradient. The gradient, no, yeah, I'm correct. 
don't know what I was thinking. It's just the gradient by itself, not the gradient of something. So it is this dx, dy, dz thing. And then the cross product means this goes underneath. Well, I mean, just look at it. It looks exactly the same, does it? I don't even need to do it or evaluate it. It's literally the same thing as what you had right here. I can't pick up my camera anymore. There we go. So literally, just when you set it up, it looks exactly like that, OK? It looks exactly the same. So I don't even need to compute it out. We already know what this equals. It equals 0, 15x, negative 4y. And so therefore, you have verified it. Um, and then it just wants to know what it is. So we'll put symbols, not symbols, vectors, put my components, 0, comma, 15x, comma, negative 4y. And I hope I'm right, because otherwise I'm going to have to go in there and figure out where it went wrong. Um, yes, we did get it right. OK, cool. So it is the same computation, really. Uh, regardless if you're doing the curl or if you're doing the gradient cross product with this. It's literally the same thing. But that was the problem that I didn't get to do. So now you have an example of it. Um, and I wanted you to verify, but we didn't even need to compute this because it's just the setup was exactly the same setup. So we were good. We did verify it. Um, but that is the end for 15.1.